they are really excited about the little one coming into their lives. I know that when we asked them what they wanted, we don't, they said we really don't know. We don't have a preference. We just want the little one to be here. I think it's bigger than that. Just look at all the people they invite us to this video party. Hmm. Excited cannot begin to explain the big reveal. They have been talking about this little one forever, it seems. You do realize this is going to be their first and only, don't you? That magnifies how excited and hopeful they are, of course. Yeah. Say, did you look at the list of names they have for the baby? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wow, that is a lot to live into and up to. Where did you hear all that? Isaiah told me a long time ago. He even wrote it down. He said a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. Big Hopes, indeed. Let's say a prayer and light the candle on our wreath, symbolizing hope. I can't wait to, for the big reveal. Please, pray with me. God of promise, thank, thank, thank you, you for, for calling, calling us in hope, hope as, as we lean upon, upon your faithfulness. faithfulness. Keep, Keep our, our hearts, hearts and, and minds open, open and, and our, our lives ready for you. you. Come, precious, precious Jesus, Jesus, come and reveal your everlasting love. love. Amen. Good morning, Asbury. Um, I am Gloria McFadden, and I was asked to speak today on behalf of Sunday School and to do the morning prayer. So prepare our hearts and minds to receive the message of hope that the Lord has for us today. Let us pray. Precious Lord, let us accept the special gift of hope that you have given us through your grace. Let us have hope in our most difficult times to keep us moving forward. Be our reminder to use hope to fuel us when faced with so-called impossible challenges. Empower us, O oh God, to give hope to others to become a community of caring in our neighborhoods and whenever you lead us. Encourage us to have hope until we reach the finish line and beyond and always help us to remember the hope in the promise of a savior who is com has come to fulfill a prophecy and set us all free. In the name of Jesus, your son, and all the power of the Holy Spirit, let hope sustain us today and always, amen.
Hello, Asbury. I'm Ashley Chapman, and I will be reading from Isaiah not chapter 9, 2 through 7, and you can follow me in your bulletin, bulletin if you like. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of dark, deep darkness on them has light shown. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They, re they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when you divide the spool for the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder. The rod of his oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tempting warrior in battle to milk, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as you for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over the, his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness this oh with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will do this
Well, hear these words once more from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given for, to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. We are in the season of Advent, a time of preparation, expectation, and anticipation, a time of looking towards the second coming of Christ, even as we celebrate his birth. Last year at this time, we noted that the Advent season was different. We noted that Advent had been intruded by some unsettling, pivotal moments in our collective history. Amen? There were post-election allegations and maneuvers to overturn the election. We all know now that those maneuvers grew into an insurrection on January 6th that took the lives of a police officer and four protesters and threatened our democracy. There, there was a rise in white supremacy, continuing escalation of racial unrest and the deaths of Ahmaud Albury, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. And we have seen mixed outcomes in accountability and justice. There was a worldwide pandemic that had claimed 1.5 million lives. That number is now 5.2 million. And the announcement of yet another variant, Omicron, and new travel restrictions sent the stock market plummeting this weekend. There was anticipation of a long-awaited coronavirus vaccine that would save our lives. Well, that vaccine did become widely available in the U.S., but we are still living in the midst of a pandemic that impacts the way we live, the way we work, the way we play, even the way we worship. Today, we consider that Advent reminds us that the world is surely in need of and searching for hope. Over the next few weeks, we will journey together in scripture and study in small groups reading Reverend Olu Brown's uh, Bible study, Hope and Advent Journey. Hope is what we need during this season with all that is going on in the world and all the challenges we are facing as a church and a denomination. After two years of it all, we should be discouraged and despondent, and yet I still have hope. Now I want all of us to know that hope. Arthur Gordon, in his book, A Touch of Wonder, tells about a man he met who had been a skydiver until on his 19th jump, his parachute failed to open fully and his emergency chute wrapped itself around the partially collapsed main chute. And so he slammed into a dry lake bed at 60 miles an hour. Imagine that. Doctors thought his broken remnant of a man uh, would never leave his hospital bed. They told him so, and he sank into a deep depression. But in that hospital, he had frequent visits from another patient, a man whose spinal cord had been severed in an automobile accident. This man would never walk again, would never, in fact, move a finger again. But he was always cheerful. 
I certainly don't recommend my situation to anyone, he would say. And yet, I can read, I can listen to music, I can talk to people. And yet, writes Arthur Gordon, those two words, and yet, shift, shift the focus from what has been lost to what remains and to what may still be gained. They gave such hope and determination to the skydiver that he came through his ordeal and today walks without a limp. Do you see then that Advent hope is simply living in God's and yet? If you have ever found yourself in transition, if you've ever been jobless, if you have ever been homeless, if you've gone through a divorce or separation, if you have ever lost a, a child, a parent, a spouse, or someone close to you, if you've ever been stricken with a debilitating disease, if you have ever struggled with an addicted child or husband or wife, if you have gone through this pandemic with all of its deaths, losses and hardships, despair and disappointments, and you are still standing, then you have lived in God's and yet. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said we must accept finite disappointment, but never, never lose infinite hope. The Advent season is about claiming that infinite hope. In this passage of scripture, the prophet Isaiah speaks to what seems to be a hopeless and destitute Israel who is in the aftermath of war, found itself facing dark days. In this time, some 700 years before the birth of Christ, the people of Israel were walking in darkness. The scripture says it, they lived in a land of deep darkness. God seemed silent to them, and they were greatly distressed and hungry, Isaiah says. Isaiah tells us that they saw only distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they were thrust into thick darkness. Well, we know what it feels like, don't we? An unending pandemic with its death, surges, and unpredictability, global and domestic terrorism, economic insecurity, an unjust and unequal justice system, systemic racism that permeates our everyday lives. We know what darkness feels like, and we too need some light. The people of Israel saw a ray of light in the birth of a king, a, a new descendant of David. For, I, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, says the prophet Isaiah. Authority rests upon his shoulders and his, he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His kingdom shall be established with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. This king was the hope of the people of Israel, the one who would rule them in justice and righteousness. He was their reason to hope. We too have a reason to hope today. Writer Baratundi Thurston shared how his first experience with a TED Talk event restored his faith in the future. At that event, he learned about a Kenyan teenager named Richard Terreri who feared that lions would devour his family's livestock. So he built an automated security system. An 18-year-old named Taylor Wilson, who dreamed to himself, I'm going to design a new, safer, more efficient nuclear reactor. And then he did it. A 16-year-old named J um, Jake Andranka, who funneled his 
anger about pancreatic cancer, which had taken the life of a family friend. And he turned it into something positive. Bucking prevailing wisdom about cancer testing, he developed a protein-based blood test that is much faster, much more efficient, and less expensive than the current options. He did this, says Thurston, all while dealing with homework and parents and puberty. A child has been born for us, a son given to us says Isaiah. Children are still being born who are succeeding in making the world safer and healthier and better and a better place. God's kingdom of justice and righteousness is being advanced one innovation at a time. Now that would seem to be enough to give us reason to hope, but the real reason to hope was born in Bethlehem seven centuries after the prophet Isaiah. The people of Israel had to wait more than 700 years to see the prophecy fulfilled. But Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, did come. The real reason to hope is that Jesus Christ was born to show us God's love and to be our Savior. In the middle of a dark, dark night, he came to bring us light and be our hope. The real reason to hope is that Jesus offers us his peace in a challenging and contentious world, saying to us, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The real reason to hope is that Jesus establishes his kingdom with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Like the prophets before him, he is anointed by God to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. The real reason to hope is that Jesus means to have justice for all of God's children, black and white, rich and poor, conservative and liberal, immigrant and native born. Jesus wants people in right relationship with God and right relationship with each other. The core meaning of righteousness is right relationship. That is in loving, giving, just, and committed relationships. That is the kind of relationship Jesus has with each of us, and it is the kind of relationship that he desires us to have with him, with God, and with each other. The real reason to hope Olu Brown writes, is that unto us a child named Jesus was born, who was heaven on earth, and good news for all humanity. He was both human and divine. In him we have a Savior who can identify with the pain and suffering of our world and our human experience. What was the hope Jesus brought to earth? Isaiah later tells us he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The hope and blessing are that we are ultimately healed from pain, healed from heartache, healed from pandemic, healed from injustice, healed from hunger and poverty. The hope and blessing are that Jesus died for our sins and everything we would face on earth. Our real reason to hope is found in Jesus. The people walked in darkness but have seen a great light, says the prophet Isaiah, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. The birth of Jesus 
reminds us that in every generation, there is the possibility that people will act as counselors and peacemakers, following in the footsteps of the Savior who is a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Advent is the season of hope, where the light of Christ enters the darkness of the world. So on this first Sunday of Advent, receive the hope that has come into the world. To those who are living in a land of deep darkness, the light of Christ is shining. He enters the lives of each of us today to show us God's love, to save us from our sins, and to lead us in paths of righteousness. Receive the light, accept the light, and then share the light. Reflect the light of Christ's hope into the dark places around you. Reflect the light of Christ's hope to make the world more just and righteous. Reflect the light of Christ's hope to build right relationships between people and God and between people and people. You don't have to build a security system for livestock. You don't have to develop a new blood test for cancer. You don't have to broker peace between rival gangs or warring nations, but you can visit a lonely relative. Hmm? You can invite a neighbor to church. You can mentor a troubled teenager. You can Keep going in spite of pandemic, injustice, or whatever seems like an insurmountable challenge. Jesus is our reason to hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest rain but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Our invitation today is, my hope is built. Beloved, you are invited to live a full life that is extended to you today. If you want to know more about being a Christian or how to deepen your relationship and walk as a follower of Jesus, if you would like to unite with this congregation, Asbury, and join us in being witnesses for Jesus, take a moment now and connect with us, those of you who are online, at prayer at asburyumcdc.org. And one of our pastors will be in touch. And if you are here, take a moment to pray and you can connect with me after the service please stand for our invitation
we continue now in our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings, remind you that our trustees launched the Mission Possible Capital Campaign on Easter Sunday. And that campaign is for critical repairs to our sanctuary and historic building and improvements to our audiovisual capability. You can um, certainly give a one-time gift, or give monthly or quarterly, but the capital campaign, we remind you, is second mile giving. Today, Gloria McFadden, one of our Sunday school teachers, will be presenting our stewardship moment. Well, good morning, Asbury and friends. As, as Reverend Mills mentioned, I am a Sunday school teacher, and I'm probably the youngest one we have. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been teaching for over 20 years, uh, followed in the footsteps of my mother who taught for 40 something years uh, and still continues. And we have uh, Ms. Mamie Goodwin here today and um, so Ms. McDaniel, there she is over in the corner. Um, these were teachers when I was young and they're still teaching. So, <laughs> so we are here to, I'm here today to give a message for uh, Mission Impossible, and it'll be from a Sunday school perspective and my experience here at Asbury. Um, in the past, there are a lot of past Sunday school teachers, and I'm trying to follow in their footsteps, and it's our hope as Sunday school teachers that we will be here in the future. So today is the beginning of the Advent season, and there's a message of hope. For me, hope means something great is to happen in the future. Sometimes we have to wait to see what happens, but oftentimes we may have to be the part of making that great thing happen in the future. I like to think that I and Sunday School and many others did our part to keep hope alive for Asbury. Back in 2011, Asbury celebrated its 175th anniversary. I was asked to collect items for a time capsule to commemorate the occasion. And I was excited, but then saddened by the fact that Asbury, as a body of Christ, was not as excited as I was. It seemed that we had lost our hope and our existence in the future at that time. People were quite reluctant to submit messages or items for the time capsule. And the prevailing thought at the time was that Asbury's doors would be closed in the future or a museum would be where, where people would come for tours is what Asbury would be. I was shocked. At that point, I made it my mission to change that way of thinking. So that time capsule did happen. And it was a positive message that went into that capsule. My mom and I had spent hours reading through all the submissions that we finally did receive while putting all this book together. And when we were done, what we saw was a really great future for Asbury. People dig down in their hearts and they found that, that vision and that positive message that we needed. So when that capsule was dedicated on Homecoming Sunday and put in the ground the following month, we were overjoyed. We had an intergenerational group of people that came together to do the dedication and our Sunday school class was a big part of that. There was much more to talk about during that time. Sunday school students who submitted messages for the capsule and actually participated in all the ceremonies started saying things like, I can't wait until 2036. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was 2036, because many years later, and they were much younger when that capsule was very, they remembered. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I got excited when one student said that, um, he remembers the capsule and that he couldn't wait to be there because he would be a man. And I said, you're right. <laughs> and I would be old, but I hope, <laughs> but I hope to be there too. <laughs> so that made me feel really good that there were still people out there thinking about that time capsule and Asbury's future. Hearing those young people really made me realize that Asbury would not be a bunch of people that don't know who we are. They, and then it says to me 
that our young people really is our future. They are that future gen um, congregation in 2036 because they will be the ones around. Some of us might not be. <laughs> so as their vision, now I wanted to tell you the children's visions because they did submit and Sunday School as a whole submitted a vision for that time capsule. And their vision was that Asbury would be a large congregation of young people and families that had a significant presence in the community and hope that Asbury embraced new ideas and traditions and upgraded their technology. Because you know, at that time, you know, Asbury was still using in Sunday school a cassette tape. And, uh, <laughs> and I was bringing in my old laptop and trying to make something happen. So <laughs> they wanted some better technology for sure then. But so our mission is possible is not just about a building, it's about supporting our young people who will be our future leaders for the church. So I'm challenging everyone who was taught the word of God at Asbury, especially if you were taught by me or my mom <laughs> or any of these Sunday school teachers. I remember that Mr. Beasley is behind me. He was my Sunday school teacher in high school. So <laughs> you were taught by any Sunday school teacher. I challenge you to contribute to the Mission Possible campaign for no other reason than to support our young people who will be here in the future. And that's all I have. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Gloria, for representing the Sunday School. Ushers, would you come forward now as we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings? And let us be in an attitude of prayer. Holy God of new beginnings, as we share our tithes and offerings with you, we are filled with hope. We enter the season of Advent with expectation. We have left behind us a time of fear, isolation, and uncertainty. And we raise our heads because we know our redemption is coming near. May our gifts be dedicated to help heal the brokenness of our world and to welcome our Messiah into the world once again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And for... Those of you who are online, we remind you there are three ways to give. Of course, you can give online by going to Asbury's homepage at asburyumcdc.org and clicking the Give button at the top of the page. You can give electronically through your banking institution. And finally, you can mail your offering by making a check out to Asbury United Methodist Church and mailing it to 926 11th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20001.
standing for our sending him soon and very soon you'll find the words to the two verses in the in the bulletin in the world. Let hope live in your heart and share the hope of Christ with all whom you meet. Share hope by 
noticing someone else's humanity. Share hope by listening to someone else's story. Share hope by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see and feel and share hope. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share hope with those you meet. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for watching. Grow and serve with us online at asburyumcdc.org. 
until next time, be blessed.